Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're going to quickly run through bags C and D of the Tamiya Arox 8x4 Tipper. These are all standard bits used on all the Tamiya lorries with two drive axles. So we're not going to go into super detail. There's a couple of tweaks of the gearbox to look at, otherwise it's all pretty much standard stuff. Right, bag C has the rear axles and suspension. We'll be using bearings rather than the bushings of course, we just need to empty the bags out into some pudding pots and we're ready to go. Step 17, spring packs. We need to fit the seats and the U-bolts to the springs and the axle mounts to the ends. All nice and simple and we end up with two identical assemblies. Next we use the top hat bushings in the pivots on the springs, offer them up to the chassis in the middle of the large cross member and use the really long screw and a nylock nut to attach. The only thing to keep in mind is that really long screw will quite readily stretch, making it difficult to feel when it's tight. The trick is to take up the slack so the bushings are up against the chassis, then add a eighth or a quarter of a turn. There's no need to make it any tighter. Okay, step 18, the diffs. I always like building these. They're a nice basic assembly that always goes together without any fuss. The trick is to grease up all the surfaces and add some generous blobs to the gears, making sure of course that there's some on both sides of the steel shims. Also when you're bolting up the cover you really need to use a little bit of thread lock. If the tiny screws fall out they're going to absolutely lunch the ring and pinion, and generally once built you're never going to need to open them up again anyway. Also another quick note, since the truck might find itself on some loose terrain getting filled up by the diggers, I've built one of the diffs with Tamiya anti-wear grease, which is extremely thick and sticky. It'll go in the frontmost axle so we have a little bit of positive traction. It's not going to be locked, but it should be stiff enough to get out of trouble. Step 19, axle shafts. This is just a case of adding a couple of bearings to each shaft and clipping on the eclipse. Then we grease up the ends and pop them into the diffs making sure to use the same type of grease that's on the inside. If the shafts won't slide in easily, the internals might be misaligned and a bit tight, so we just need to loosen the screws a bit, jiggle the shafts and retighten. The important thing is not to force them in. Once spun a few times, the diff built with the ceramic grease should be lovely and free to turn. If you go with the anti-wear, you might find it a bit stiff to turn by hand, but I wouldn't worry too much. Step 20, pinion gears. This one's really simple, especially with the bearings as we don't need to use any grease. Each one gets two bearings and an e-clip. There's two front housings and one rear for the front axle. The rear axle of course gets a blank housing in a couple of steps. Step 21, the front axle. Now I'm using the diff I made up with the anti-wear grease which just pops into one housing or the other. Check the mesh, which should be okay. Then add some ceramic grease around the ring while turning it to make sure there's a nice even coat on all the teeth. Then I like to add a little bit of extra grease before offering up the other half of the housing with the other pinion. Turn an axle shaft to make sure it feels okay, then start adding the screws and nuts to hold the axle together. Lastly, we just need to add the cups and the grub screws with a little bit of thread lock. Nip them up and that's the front axle done. Step 22 is the rear axle which is exactly the same as the front axle, except we've got a blank housing and just the one drive cup. Step 23, fitting the axles. In this one, we offer the axles up to the springs, add the damper mounts, the screws and the short drive shaft. We just need to make sure the axles are the right way up and the right way round. I managed to fit the front one upside down, so the widgets that line up with the bump stops were on the wrong side, but I swapped it round once I noticed. The trick is to carefully match up with the diagram in the manual and test to make sure both axles spin the right way. It's a lot easier to set up now rather than have to strip everything down later. Also, just for now, I've removed the drive shaft as it's very prone to falling out until the control arms get fitted. Step 24, the arms. They fit with the step screws and nuts. Just add the drive shaft and bolt them up. When they're on, the assembly should move nice and freely. If it's stiff, you might need to loosen the nuts that clamp the springs so they can self-align. It's a bit of a pain, but not too bad as long as you've got a nice small spanner. It's important to get everything moving nicely now, as it's going to be very difficult to fix later, 
Having it all move smoothly will make the truck quite a bit better on uneven terrain. Okay, step 25, the dampers, which are exactly the same as the front two. We just need to make up four of them this time, like so. Step 26, fitting the dampers. Now the tops fit with the plastic mounts on the chassis and the bottoms mount with the step screws. Fit all four and that's the rear axles built and fitted. All standard stuff, but if it works, why change it, I guess? Okay, next we're on to bag D, the gearbox. Most of this will be done by the book, except we have a different motor and we're using a micro servo for the gear shifting. All right, step 27, the shift shaft and the motor mount end of the gearbox. In addition to the Tamiya bits, we also need the aftermarket shift servo mount, the same type we used on the Scania 770S. The quality is good enough, but just like the last one, the included screws don't fit. The mounting holes in the mount and the nuts from Tamiya are M2, and the screws are M2.5. It's not too much of an issue though, we just need some m 2 by 10s to mount the mount. The shift shaft is built up as per the manual. The important bit is to make sure there's grease all over the sliding parts. If there's any dry spots, the forks do tend to catch rather than slide nicely. The end plate is built up as per the manual, plus of course the mount and the longer screws. And just for now, I haven't thread locked the three screws attaching the rods. We'll do that right at the end so the gearbox can self align with the gearbox case. Step 28, gear shaft A. This one has the spur gear and the top gears for first, second and third. All straightforward, just remember to grease up the splines as the adapters go on, just to avoid any rattles. Step 29, gear shaft B. This one has the dog clutches, so it's a bit more interesting to put together. We need to carefully clean up the clutches so the bits that attach them to the parts trees are nice and smooth. And we need to make sure that there's plenty of grease on the clutch dogs so they're well lubed. Again, if they're dry, they can get a bit sticky. Also, I've not greased up the gears on either shaft just yet. We've still got to install the shafts into the gearbox and if they're greasy, they make a huge mess of everything they touch. It's much easier to grease them up after the core of the gearbox is assembled. Step 30, installing the shafts. As mentioned, we won't grease up the gears just yet. We'll do it dry. Also, Tamiya wants us to add two more springs to the end of the shift shaft, but they do absolutely nothing useful. They just make the shift servo work harder in first and third gear. So as usual, I haven't fitted them. The gears should turn okay, but until it's all greased up, they will probably feel a bit gritty and catchy. Don't worry too much just yet though. Step 31, the motor. Instead of the stock motor with a separate ESC, I've got a Hobbywing Fusion SE, a brushless crawler motor with a built-in ESC. The same one we used on the Scania. It's super smooth with a huge amount of very controlled torque at low speed. Plus with the built-in ESC, it frees up quite a bit of space for other electronics. Fitting it is the same as a stock motor, but there's a few more options for the orientation. I found installing it so the leads come out of the bottom of the motor works out the best. Next we install the micro servo on the mount and link it up to the shift rod. Now I've hooked it up to the 6 channel receiver that came with the Radio Master MT12 and set it up for a 3 position switch. I've also greased up the shift forks and the gears. With it all powered up we can give it a quick low speed test. And there we go, it's super quiet and smooth, just what you want on these trucks. Now, we're not gonna go at a higher speed though, as it flings out the excess grease all over the manual and my working area. Don't ask me how I found that out. Okay, step 32, the gear case, which just covers the gearbox and gets fitted with the screws and the nuts. Once it's on, we can remove the screws holding the rods to the end plate one by one and thread lock them in. Everything should be held nice and square so we can't build in a twist, giving the gearbox the best chance of running smoothly. Step 33, fitting the gearbox. Now this one's nice and easy. We just need to drop the gearbox into the chassis, offer up the prop shaft and position the gearbox so the lugs match up with the threaded holes in the chassis rails. Then we just install the four screws. Now I would recommend not using thread lock on them 
as they're going through some fairly thin plastic and thread lock can make plastic go brittle. It's better to use a set of plain washers and some shake proof or star washers to keep them from falling out. Otherwise that's bag D complete. All pretty standard stuff except for the servo. If we flip the chassis over we can see the Carson steering linkage doing its thing too. With the steering flip round to correct the Ackerman, the Carson clears the bottom of the gearbox quite nicely, and it's far less effort than making your own custom rod. I suppose while we're here we could connect up the radio again and run up the steering. The front axle isn't connected yet, but the rest of the system seems to be working quite nicely. The gear train also sounds pretty good, but there is a bit of a rattle. That's probably from the long prop shaft with the dog bones. When the truck goes on its wheels, the weight of everything will dampen that out. Or of course, we could upgrade the prop shaft to one with some nice universal joints, which is quite tempting. Anyway, that's it for this week. From here on, the build gets fairly specific to this model, so we're going to go into a bit more detail. The goal is to have the truck together so I can work out where the electronics can go and how to get the tipper tipping, hopefully without spending out huge amounts of money on the Tamiya actuator kit. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. Like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!